La cinta se estrena este viernes en toda España y para celebrarlo los actores Luke Evans y Richard Armitage han visitado nuestro país para asistir a la premier de la película. Los intérpretes que dan vida a los personajes de Bardo y de Elena Notorin se han mostrado encantados de formar parte de la segunda entrega de las aventuras de Bilbo Bolsón y de haber podido contribuir a la adaptación cinematográfica del universo Tolkien. It takes you, transports you to a world which was written about in the 1930s by a fantastic novelist and we've brought it to life and, and you know, gone to town on the different worlds we, 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 the, the characters visit. It's, a, it, you know, it's, it's two, two and a half hours of just escapism. It's what we want nowadays, isn't it? We live in such a realist world. It's nice just to disappear sometimes and uh, live the life of a wizard or a dwarf or a human being. La película cuenta además con unos espectaculares efectos especiales que nos transportan a la Tierra Media a través de coloridas secuencias de acción que cuentan con la firma de Peter Jackson. And I think a lot of um of the viewers were expecting just another rollout of Lord of the Rings and he's really trying to push that boundary in in cinema just so not not just the quality of the image but the the extent to which the CGI world and the real world are kind of inseparable. The Hobbit was by far the biggest thing that I'd done to that point in my career. You are aware that you're joining something and there was a lot of anticipation by the fans about the filmic interpretation of the characters. For me it was uh, really exciting. Fuego de Dragón y Destrucción. Es cuanto nos traerás. No me vas allá de lo que ansía. I remember on my first day of filming feeling quite envious of the, uh, the first day of filming Lord of the Rings when nobody knew what they were making and they were able to work in a kind of isolation. There was a lot of focus on, on what we were going to do. But I think there's something about being in New Zealand on the other side of the planet that kept that safe, really. And I think it's why Peter likes to work there. Somos los enanos de Erebor. Hemos venido a reclamar nuestra tierra. I had the most fun during the barrel sequence. They built a water course. And it was like working on a theme park ride for about two weeks. It was very exciting to get in the barrel every day and try and steer it and see if you could go faster than everybody else. I was very jealous. ¿Cómo sabes que no nos va a traicionar? Often he's, he was quite isolated and he was always either with his son or, or he was quite on his own quite a lot. So when I actually got to do scenes with everybody, it was really nice. You know, it was um, I sometimes forgot to listen to Peter shout action, I'd still be yabbering away, still talking. Esto no acabará aquí. Con cada victoria, el mal será más fuerte. They taught you how to walk like a dwarf. Yeah, I did consider having the lower part of my leg amputated before I started work. Yeah, lots of physical training, um, weapons training, um, singing. So yeah, it was quite extensive. Really. Um, lots of things, actually. Um, when I got the job as uh, Bard the Bowman, I realized quite soon what it meant. It meant lots of things. I mean, moving to New Zealand and uh, setting up home there working with uh, a brilliant director like Peter Jackson, joining a huge company of stellar actors, which didn't really, I didn't really appreciate until I actually got there and then started to work with them. And uh, so yeah, lots of great things and very, very many good memories. Um, f for me, aside from the, the work issue and the career issue, I think um, having been familiar with this book since I was quite small to to come to the, to uh, middle age and, and uh, be part of the making of a film um, like this is really special. And, and I was a huge fan of Lord of the Rings, so I knew Peter's work. Um, and I never expected that I would get to work in The Hobbit, so I feel very privileged. When one sees the movie, he sees the complexity not only of the characters, but also the physical at the time to interpret his characters. What is the most difficult and the most difficult at the time to incarnate the character that interprets each one of them? I think um, I always see it in this way, that, that really the physical work is just something that you can practice. Uh, and it t it, it's discipline and um, energy that it, that it takes. The acting side of it is something which is always elusive, and I find that more um, challenging and, and more scary because you can, it's something you can't tangibly hold on to, and it, it may come and go. Um, so, you know, for, for both of those reasons, it was interesting to be in a movie where both of those things are explored. Oh, um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're interconnected, aren't they? I think the working 
uh, often it wasn't just about the actions. Action sequences con con always contained a progression of the story. So I always felt like I was responsible for doing not just the, you know, the, f the, the, the action of the scene, but also telling the story and progressing that too. So, um, yeah, it was all connected. Hace poco Bruno Mortensen comentaba que eh, él sentía, cuando ha pasado el tiempo, que el participar en El Señor de los Anillos eh, forma parte eh, de la historia del cine. O sea, él fue, eh, eh, cree que, que esta película trasciende mucho más allá de lo que es una simple película. ¿Ustedes creen que El Hobbit va más allá de lo que es un sim una simple película que permanecerá en el tiempo? Bueno, es mayor, es más grande, por supuesto, porque no solamente es un guión que apareció y que se ha hecho película, sino esto ha sido adaptado de un libro muy famoso, un libro escrito hace mucho tiempo, que es querido por millones de personas. Y sientes una responsabilidad. Tienes la responsabilidad de crear un personaje que ya está en las mentes y en los corazones y en las imaginaciones de personas en todo el mundo. Eso está ahí, por supuesto. Pero Vigo dice eso bueno, a toro pasado, diez años más tarde. Igual tendremos que esperar nosotros un poco para decir lo mismo del Hobbit. Pero me parece a mí que irán en la misma dirección. Es una historia maravillosa y lo hemos creado con mucha pasión, energía, amor y tiempo. Y ya veremos, pero sí, espero que se convierta en parte de la historia del cine y dejará un legado y nosotros nos sentiremos orgullosos de haber participado en él. Y finalmente, eh, muchos millones de personas vieron El Hobbit 1. Se supone que tienen que repetir para ver El Hobbit 2, pero por si alguno nos anima, ¿por qué tenemos que ver La desolación de Smoke? Creo que les invitaría al cine porque Peter nos va a entregar Smog, el dragón, para que lo vea el público. Este dragón ha existido en las imaginaciones de todos aquellos que han leído El Hobbit y, y también en nuestra imaginación durante el proceso de filmación, pero creo que es un regalo cinematográfico. Es una bestia enorme, tremendo, y es un psicópata y creo que eso es algo que será atractivo para los públicos. Espero que sea así y que les vean la tercera, es decir, que vengan a España de nuevo a hablarnos un poquito ya de la, del final de, de esta hermosa trilogía. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you go to New Zealand and you you um, you get to work in Peter Jackson's digital playground, and that's exactly what it feels like. You know, you walk to set some days. There's a, there's a set built. Some days there's nothing except a little picture that he pulled out the night before, and he he's inventing it as he goes along, and that. Um, it's hard to prepare for, but it's like being a child again. You just go and, and play and have fun. Yeah, Pete loves to have a go at um, the stunts. He, he, he loved sliding down rooftops when I had to do it. And um, if there was anything he potentially could have a go at, he would. You know, he's he's quite hands-on. Somos los enanos de Erebor. Hemos venido a reclamar nuestra tierra. Os ofrezco mi ayuda. ¿Cómo sabes que no nos va a traicionar? No lo sé. No hay rey bajo la montaña y nunca lo habrá. The, the scene I like the most is um, when the dwarves enter the mountain. It's, um, it was just one of those very quiet scenes that, that you read on the page and don't really value it too much. But then the playing of it was, um, was quite spiritual and, and uh, I didn't expect it to be as moving as it was. So that was my, one of my favorite scenes. To I think my scene, the one I really enjoyed shooting was um, when I first sail the dwarves into Lake Town and they've covered in fish. <laughs> yeah, um, oh, I've remembered my worst one. That, there we go, that's the worst <laughs> one, my favorite one. Yeah. It was, uh, I remember them, you know, um, Richard and all the actors that played the dwarves was, they smelt of fish for days. Esto no acabará aquí. Con cada victoria, el mal será más fuerte. Legolas te ha cogido mucho cariño. No le infundas esperanza si no la hay. It's changing every day. Every time you go to a new country or a new city, like when we came to Madrid, you get face to face with those people. And that's the only opportunity you really get to interact with them. Um, I find it kind of thrilling. It's, it's, uh, it's hard not to, really, when you see that excitement and see their faces waiting for the movie. And, and you know, you have to take that away with you because uh, you don't see it all the time. I'm on 
social media. So I sort of have interaction with fans from around the world um, daily. Um, you, you hear what they said and what they think of the movie. And, and also they often put pictures up of you meeting them or some, and, the, and the effect that you had on them. And you feel sort of, I feel, I feel very connected to them. Um, they're important. The fans are very important, especially with a movie of this size. You know, we, we, it touches a lot of people um, in many different ways. And, um, you know, part of what we've done in the film is what's, is part of their, 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 their journey as well as ours. So it's, um, yeah, they're, 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 I mean, they're very, very ardent fans, the Hobbit fans, as well as the Lord of the Rings fans. They, they not only turn up at premieres, but they dress up as you, <laughs> which is, you know, quite, quite special. Que ciegos hemos estado, ni siquiera hemos visto que el enemigo regresaba. He encontrado algo en los túneles de los trascos. ¿Qué has encontrado? Mi valor. Bien, lo necesitarás. I mean, in the second film, really, Thorin. Like you say, he takes the reins because Gandalf finally leaves the quest and he gets a chance to be the leader. He screws up pretty badly. There's the low point and the high point of his career. He gets thrown into Thranduil's prison and is stripped of everything, and he opens the door to Erebor. And I think those two kind of extremes of where he is in the second film make him quite exciting for me. And you meet Bard for the first time in, uh, in the second film, and he's, he's quite a unique species in Middle-earth because uh, Tolkien wrote very little human characters into The Hobbit. So, uh, yeah, he is a very lowly character. He cuts quite a tragic figure, really. He has very little going on in his life. He's a widow, he has three children, and he's a bargeman. He's not even Bard the Bowman, which is what he's, you know, renowned for by the end of the story. But, uh, yeah, he's there. He sees a way of making a bit of money by smuggling these dwarves in. And, you know, as the story unfolds, uh, you, you see that there's, there's more to Bard than just this this family man who, uh, you know, supports his family and protects. Yeah, he's an interesting character. He's, you know, he goes on quite a long journey in the film, and you know, it's a, it's a journey of self-discovery as well, which is was nice to play as an actor. Fuego de dragón y destrucción. Es cuanto nos traerás. No ve más allá de lo que ansía. No pondré en peligro esta misión por la vida de un saqueador. Se llama Bilbo. 